Happy Throwback Thursday, and welcome to another episode of the Creative Differences Podcast about a 90s action movie. That's our thing now. I'm Dallas, and I was more of a Tekken kid growing up, but I'm also into Mortal Kombat. I'm Gabby, and I didn't think I would understand as many references as I did in this movie. (laughs) I'm Demi, and I really don't know much about Mortal Kombat because Fighting Force was my choice of a fighting game. Welcome to another episode of the Creative Differences Podcast. Yo, I like Fighting Force. I didn't think a lot of people knew about it. It's kind of one of the like more obscure games from Yeah, from PS1. Gabby has no idea what we're talking about. No Fighting Force idea. was awesome. Um, Alana was uh, my favorite. or um, No, Alana was my favorite. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I don't remember the character's name. I just remember the giant dude. Yeah. I used to use him a lot. Yeah. But like, yeah, it was like Fighting Force, Tekken, and then I don't think I got to play Mortal Kombat. I think I've played Mortal Kombat. I don't think I got to play it a lot. That makes sense. Yeah. It was extremely violent. This isn't about that. <laughs> this is about the movie, Mortal Kombat, 1995, because 1995 is the phase that we're going through as a unit, because <laughs> we're 90s kids, and that's what we do. Anyway, before we dive back into the 90s again, please like and share and subscribe and review, because we rented out a theater to see the new Mortal Kombat, and if we can monetize this podcast, and I can do that every time I want to see a movie. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tax write-off at that point. Boom. Would love it. It's fair. <laughs> work, it's work great. expenses. So excited. All right, guys. Uh, so when was your first time watching this movie? And uh, I guess what was your reaction to it? Um, About four hours ago. Same. Yo, same, yeah. guys. We all watched it about four <laughs> hours ago for the first time. Yeah. It was... Um, <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, we spent last week talking Crazy. about... A 1995 movie that if I had seen it for the first time this year and wasn't a fan of the original source material would probably think was really bad. (laughs) And here we are (laughs) watching a movie from 1995 that I'm seeing for the first time Yep. now. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't a huge fan. Like I'm not a really big Mortal Kombat fan, but you know, it's not bad. Like it's not good, but I feel the same. I don't hate it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, it's not it's not good. It's not horrible. But, you know, I had an enjoyable time. I feel like this movie is like the definition of camp, you know? It's very, very campy. campy. It's very, very campy. And that's how I feel about it. I was like, this is a lot. And I like it, I think. Yes. It, it, I, I feel like I would have had even more fun if I was watching it with somebody. But I wasn't watching it with <laughs> someone. I was kind of just watching it alone. Yeah. So... I would say it's a it's a good watch as like uh like with a drinking game I feel like this would be great or with just another person that's down to clown the movie a little bit with you. Yeah, this is one for the homies. Well, let's get into the yeah. story, shall we? Dallas, what you got with for us out of IMDb? I know you like reading those descriptions. IMDb. I do. This one's, you know, pretty basic. Three unknowing martial artists are summoned to a mysterious island to compete in a tournament whose outcome will decide the fate of the world. Not bad, not bad, not bad. That is very simple, yeah. and it's very on brand, right? very on, very on par. That's exactly what happens. They're like, we're just gonna give you the story. We're not gonna throw spoilers in there. We're not gonna call anybody ugly. We're just gonna boom. <laughs> Here's the summary. And uh, who directed and starred in this movie, Dallas? Yeah, yeah. It is directed by Paul W. S. Anderson, who is known for a bunch of Resident Evil movies and Monster Hunter because he really likes video games. Want to know what's funny? As soon as I finished watching Mortal Kombat 1995, my little brother watched Monster Hunter, the movie, because he's been wow. getting oh. super into that video game recently. Nice. See, you guys are having a Paul Anderson day. Somebody has to. And it was written by Kevin Droney, who wrote for some TV shows in the 80s and 90s. And that's about all I could find. All so, Yes. He's very old. I assume he's retired or dead. I don't know. Anyway, it stars Robin Shu. Lyndon Ashby, Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa, Bridget Wilson, and Christopher Lambert, inexplicably as Raiden, but we'll get to that. Oh, yep. Uh, so the story, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty good way to do it. Like, when you have a video game that I... Hmm, like, now every video game is basically a movie anyway with its story. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know a lot about what Mortal Kombat was like in 95. In terms well, from of what game. I what I understand, Mortal Kombat didn't have a story mode until like 2009. So. Oh, wow. So it was literally just for fighting. Well, there was it's like 
they've done a lot of things with these games and like there are versions of it like you know offshoots or whatever that have different stories and the characters have had like backstories but i don't know how much that always incorporates into the game i'm not the guy to ask yeah the characters have their own mythos for sure yeah and the characters have a really really deep like that's one thing i do like shout out to uh i think ed boone and i want to say john tobias sorry if i messed that up the creators of the game like they really went in depth with these characters and their backstories and in terms of like we need two people to fight it's a pretty good story like we need people to fight give them a reason to go to this place and they will fight and they have reasons some are better than others some is revenge another one's revenge johnny's is just a guy told me to get on this boat so now i'm on this boat trying to fix my career guys (laughs) i'm trying to fix my career right johnny was a pretty good character (laughs) yes we'll get to him (laughs) yep but um what do you guys think of the story it was straight and to the point yeah it's like you said it was very simple like these three people go to to fight in a in a tournament of fighting the only thing that that bugged me there were certain fights that would happen in the movie and i was like so is this also part of the tournament or are we just randomly fighting people right now or Yo. because yeah. johnny cage fights sub-zero and scorpion outside of the tournament and i'm like yep. is this part of the tournament or are you just and for what purpose are you fighting sub-zero and scorpion for yep, nothing exactly. just we're just fighting that's what we're doing What's happening? These were questions I also had. <laughs> it's funny because, like, yes, one side of my brain was like, this can't be sanctioned. Johnny's just out for a stroll, and Scorpion's out in the woods, like, lurking. And then he just looks at him like he's in a Pokemon game, and then the thing starts. And then, yeah, when Liu Kang fights Sub-Zero later, they're just, like, in this weird, dark stairway place. Yeah. And it's great. It looks like Mortal Kombat. It's great, but, like, this is a tournament. Are these two in the tournament? Because I don't know if the ninjas ever fight in the tournament. They I just show up to either. try to kill people and then they dip. Yeah. And then uh, also Liu Kang fights uh, Kitana in the movie as well. And I'm like, are you guys just training or is this a fight fight? That was my thing. Because like, okay, this is clearly just like practice. She's like giving him tips while they're sparring. And then Shang Tsung is like, Shang Tsung is like, ah, Kitana, I'm disappointed in you. Stop giving him advice go away and it's like that's not how these fights end somebody dies or somebody doesn't die and then shang Tsung decides they're gonna die anyway it was very it was very strange yeah, yeah like, like the tournament not, i understood I, I didn't understand actually i understood the tournament until we got to the end and then i didn't understand the tournament anymore that was ridiculous because they beat but goro like, <laughs> so you won the tournament but then shang Tsung was like nah fam tournament continues i'm fighting oh, i was like what God. wait what yeah <laughs> that whole thing was ridiculous because it's first of all this is not how tournaments work <laughs> at the end of this tournament johnny Liu kang and sonya oh, are all undefeated absolutely yeah. at some point they'd have they'd have to face they each other had to fight. but the, but the thing is the tournament is really just earth fighting these like out out world Things. I don't know. So as long as like people from <laughs> as long as there's like one earth person left standing, it should be fine. And in this case, they were all left standing. This is and one of those movies also- where you just got to shut off your brain and not try yeah. to figure out the logistics of how yeah, the tournament see, works. See, or else see, no. I hadn't thought about those things, Dallas, until literally you just mentioned them. And now I'm like, this is dumb. But like at the yeah. time I was like, yeah, they just got to beat the bad guys, whatever. <laughs> like, like I turned my brain off. <laughs> If you think about it from the perspective of like Shang Tsung is just using this tournament to gain power. Cool. I get that. But um, it's the tournament still. I thought if if the humans lose the Mortal Kombat, then the Emperor takes over Earth. Well, yeah, that was that's what would have happened. Right. But like, did Johnny even have any fights in the tournament? Like he fought in the woods. He fought Goro. He fought Goro. He fought Goro and he like just punched him in the nuts and was like, I win. Yeah, (laughs) that was great. But um. (laughs) I was like, yeah, these are so weird. And then, like, and then he killed Sub. No, he didn't kill Sub Zero. He killed he Scorpion. Killed Scorpion. Scorpion. With Scorpion, yeah. I was like, wait, is this a power now? Like, he had the thing coming out of his hand, and was that? A, that was. Wild. Is that a video game thing? I thought he just had a scorpion tail. He had like a snake coming out of his hand. No. So, um, when we get the characters, I'll break down. Well, okay. the ones I do let's, know. Well, for you no, guys. let's do that. Well let's get on. into characters, man. Cool. One thing I will give this movie is that they really went for it because a lot of times you'll take an adaptation of something super silly. And then try to water it down for a movie like, oh, audiences aren't really going to like that. But they went for it with pretty much everything. Like, Scorpion does have that thing in his hand. To my knowledge, it's not like a weird 
creature. Yeah, that was a snake. It's just something thing. he uses to grab people. Yeah, it looked like um, this is Zerlina from Men in Black too, and she had all this like vine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, what is this? But um, it bled. Yeah. yeah. From what I know, it's it, like, like a chain that he has in his hand that he uses to grab people. I didn't, I didn't think it was alive, but whatever. Oh, okay. But you know, all the powers, yeah, he does take his face off and reveal a flaming skull that shoots fire. That's all real. Did not know oh, he could wow. do that. Yeah, that's his thing. He's like demon from. He's like, if I had to compare him, I mean, did ghost, they show ghost rider. Ghost rider. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he has like this hellish thing going on. He's super dope. I don't know if he bleeds lava like that. That was weird. That was amazing. But I love also, that part. it was very. They like... couldn't. Yeah, they couldn't do like real blood because it's PG thirteen for some weird reason. I mean, I it's get also... the reason. Money. Yeah. Well, okay. It's also very like in. Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. I was gonna say, what do you guys think of the characters in this movie? Like, for instance, based off of the, I feel bad because I was almost basing it off the trailers that I've seen for the 2021 Mortal Kombat. I was disappointed mm. that Sub Zero and Scorpion don't have sto- backstories or anything about I... them. There are no agency for them at all in this movie. They are just brainwashed minions. I hated that so much because Sub Zero is my favorite Mortal Kombat character. He has quite the story, and so does Scorpion. And they're like they the two. They have yeah yeah. And the, oh yeah. They're like the two, I wouldn't say most important characters because Liu Kang is usually a protagonist, but for me, they're the most important characters. And they're just wasted and they get killed by this random white man. And then, you know, <laughs> Liu Kang does kill Sub-Zero, which is, he's the main character, whatever. But it was such a waste. I hated it. I thought Liu Kang was great. I love Liu Kang. He was Kang. cool. Yeah. I feel like, like nice he was dude. the only one with depth in the movie. Like everyone else was like, I'm a stock character. And yeah. Liu Kang was like, there's depth here. Look into my sad eyes. Yes. Because it's funny because Liu has the, they killed my boy. His my brother, brother, yeah. Like, backstory. And then Sonya has, they killed my boy. <laughs> but it doesn't feel the same. No. Because no. Sonya is just. There's no depth there. Like, let's pour a gallon of revenge motivation into this character. And then well, just run with it. Yeah, I felt like Sonya got really, like, underhanded, shorthanded in this movie. Because, like. Mm-hmm. I was like, I get it, yo. She's trying to like avenge her partner. That's what's up. And then she kills Kano halfway through the movie. And it's just like, all right, what's she here for? Right. Are she going home? On top of that, like Shang Tsung brings her in for a particular reason that I never quite understand. Is it just so that he can choose her to beat in the tournament? Or I never quite, I, I there is no resolution to that. And I feel bad for Sonya because I'm just like, well, once we get halfway through the story, there is no longer a use for Sonya except to become a damsel in distress, which sucks. Yep. Yep. And they were building it up so much. Like every time Shang Tsung saw her, he would say something like, do not harm Sonya. That's my Sonya, my beautiful Sonya. Oh my God, Sonya. I'm like, are and you trying then, to marry her? What's happening? At the end, he just kidnaps her and is like, I'm going to fight you. And he's like, well, you could have fought anybody. Yeah, if, and the rule is, but the rule is she has to accept. Like she has to accept, right? Which was like, so he kidnaps her and challenges her, and then she has to accept. But she's like, nah. And then they later they're like, hey man, you're breaking the rules. And then he's like, fine, I'll fight Johnny. And then Luke Hang is like, no, I'm gonna fight you. And I'm like, bro, what is this tournament? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. You made the mistake of trying to make sense of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then we have Johnny who. I like Johnny, and I I think partially I like Johnny because he styles his dad. So <laughs> it took me too long to realize. Oh my god, that's Styles' dad. Oh, I saw Wait, it what? from the first scene. Uh, from Team I was Wolf. like, oh, it's Styles. It's Mr. Stilinski from, from. Yeah, Lyndon Ashby plays uh, Styles' father. Oh. In the popular MTV oh, show. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, he was annoying, but he was funny in like a '90s way. Yeah. Yeah, he was super '90s. Yeah, and he just. What bothered me about him is that he brought like 30 suitcases, but he didn't have a single set of fighting clothes to fight in the tournament. He even, though he in to, in like, even though he was trying to, even though he was trying to prove his rep as a fighter, right, like this is why people think you're fake. Well, your fights are in work clothes. What are you oh, doing? Oh god. Well, in my head, this is like a stereotype of what people think like a white man would be like at like one of these tournaments or like you know that baseball game that like they made in japan where they just made up names that sounded american for the <laughs> players that's what johnny cage felt like to me in this movie oh my god he felt like like a caricature of a white movie star so of course he doesn't have fighting clothes <laughs> like <laughs> he's yeah. just gonna wear his clothes the whole movie before we move on silly. i do want to hear mm-hmm. what dallas has to say about raiden Oh yeah, I thought Raiden was an interest. I was like, this is an interesting 
choice here, but I did kind of like, I kind of liked his attitude, but outside of that, I was like, you're so weird. I kind of disliked everything about Raiden in this movie. So like, uh, what's his name? No disrespect to Christopher Lambert. Cause you know, you did what you came to oh, do. He you played the job, it. You did it. He played yeah, it. But it's just like the way he speaks, like his gravelly tone, his weird laugh that he does sometimes when nothing is funny. The fact that he's white and <laughs> <laughs> that's only bad to me. Because he's introduced as the god of a bunch of Asian people. Yeah. Raiden is not a human. He doesn't need to be any particular race. But if you have a bunch of Chinese monks worshiping him as their god, and it's like this white dude shows up, I'm like, why are you white? And it's like, I know you can't just ask people why they're white, but like, why are you white, Raiden? <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you make a good point. When he popped up on screen, I was like, is is Raiden white? Why? Uh... <laughs> All right. That's cool he's not in the 2021 version that's cool no he, he, wait he is no he's, he's japanese not. oh never mind i thought like the character does not exist in the movie no 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 never yes mind. he is not white in the movie which uh you know no disrespect to white people we love you guys no you make it a good point though if you're like the <laughs> god of like of an asian culture you should probably be asian why are they imagining you as white yeah problematic but yeah i thought he was funny whenever he would come on screen it's one of those things where like these characters are just so 90s and i just i knew what this movie was gonna be from the moment i heard mortal Kombat yelled as soon as it started and then heard the dance music start playing so it wasn't even like i was disappointed i was like no i knew that this is what this movie was gonna be and i can't be mad about it it's doing what it's made to do of course (sighs) that music Oh, it's so good. Well, well, hold on, because before we get to that music, Katana, yo, she was like super pretty, but not super interesting. Like I don't know, they didn't know what yeah. they wanted to do with her. She was just kind of like, "Hey, Liu Kang, use water." She was just like say vague things, like use the the element of life. You must face yourself, and it's like, yo, know, if you have advice, just tell him. <laughs> if you want him to use water against the Ice Ninja, because this movie is stupid, then just tell him to use the bucket of water against the Ice Ninja. That pissed me off. <laughs> like, you cannot kill Sub-Zero with a bucket of water. Yeah, whatever. that's dumb, but whatever. But um, she was indeed pretty. You were not wrong. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. She was so pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man. I was like, wow. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was also disappointed that she wasn't wearing blue, because blue is her color. And mm. these characters are like, the way they look is a big thing. Mm. But fun fact, she was voiced by Cree Summer in an animated show in the 90s called Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm. And then... She was voiced by Gray Griffin, who also goes by Gray Delisle, because... Because she can. Yeah. And Mortal Kombat Legends, Scorpion's Revenge. I have not seen either of those things, but I love those two actresses. And speaking of actresses, Cameron Diaz was supposed to be Sonya. Oh, uh, I could see it. She injured her wrist, I think, and had to be replaced. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then Bridget came in and did all her own stunts, so shout out to Bridget. Yo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are the characters. Visuals the and part. sound, guys. It looks so bad. Okay. Uh, Here's the thing. I actually did not mind the way it looks. I think there are certain things like it looks like it came out in the 90s. Let's just say that. Yes. Like I respect what they did with Goro, like the big rubber suit, like it's practical. Oh, yeah. I love practical stuff like that. That was pretty cool. Like he looked very goofy at times because, you know, it's the 90s. We don't have the best things. But uh, the CG, like when Shang Tsung's face like turns into a, a... skull or whatever like every time that happened i was like well here's the thing i'm not gonna say that the cgi was good it was 90 cgi it was good for 90 what i'm saying cgi i'm not even saying it looks bad for the time no i'm i'm saying visually like i thought the cinematography was really cool like there were a few shots in this movie that i was like oh that's that's gorgeous like when Liu kang is sitting out by the water and there's like the sun rising behind him i was like oh that's nice that's real pretty looking i like that yeah they did good things with like Filming set pieces, yeah, the outworld, other world, nether realm, all those places. They did a good job of making everything look like a Mortal Kombat level, like the chains and then the spikes coming up, stuff like that. It looks good. It's just, yeah, the stuff that can age badly does age badly because it's been twenty six years. But like, I thought that it was really cool. Like, I liked how stylized it was, mm-hmm. especially because like in the nineties, like nineties movies don't necessarily look bad. But like 90s fantasy movies and 90s like sci-fi movies, there is a certain stylization you have to do so that it will age well. Mm. And this movie kind of does that. Like, obviously, the CG is not going to age well. Like, I can't blame them. That technology was not up to date. It's not their fault. Right. Yeah, certain things 
can't age well if you have limited technology. Yeah, but it's filmed well, and I appreciate that. I think I think mm-hmm. like the film looks good. The sets look great. Yeah, and it's you know, it's like Gabby said, it's campy, but it really leans into that campiness factor that I feel like a lot of '90s action movies did that were based in like martial arts. Yeah, I will say that I do not miss mm-hmm. the over exaggerated sounds of martial art movies in the 90s oh so great (laughs) you know what i i liked i don't know if this counts as a sound but i like that they included in the script the sounds that they make when they declare a fight right so that like they were saying like fatality and like flawless victory yes those were great and that goes goes to (laughs) finish him (laughs) yeah like that stuff get over here yeah, everything like that is like the reason why I think I like this movie is because they just went for it in terms of we're making Mortal Kombat movie. We're going to give you Mortal Kombat things. Yeah. Also, I like that. Like, so they didn't um, they did not shy away from the Mortal Kombat theme song. They were like, we're just going to instead of an orchestral version of this, we're just going to use the actual. One. Wasn't that song like, made, they made right? it. for this movie? It was made for this movie. Yeah. What? Yeah. That song wasn't in there before. What? Oh, I yeah. thought it was a, the like versions I've heard have that sound. Like the Mortal Kombat that I've seen have that sound in them. Yeah, so, like it became like the song went platinum and it became the theme song for Mortal Kombat. But it's called a uh, Techno Syndrome, and it's fantastic. And they did not so shy hard. away from using it during fights in this movie. I was like, oh, we're they actually not. using it. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's what. That's why I thought it was from the video game because I was like, oh, they're just gonna use it everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's also like, I've heard it in the video game. This song for me is like the good version of ancient lamentation music. <laughs> <laughs> because like Stop it. if every time Wonder Woman popped up in Zack Snyder's Justice League, a song like this came on, like even like you know, her theme song. The cello. I'd be hyped. Yeah. yeah. But like this got me hyped every time. Down to uh, the first thing we hear when we press play on this movie. It's oh that my scream. God. And man, I almost fell out of my chair because I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> okay. I thought we'd get like a logo or something first. No, right? we, I mean, we got the logo first. It just happened to come with the Mortal Kombat scream. That's the thing. It's like Mortal Kombat as like New Line Cinema or something is coming. Yeah, out. yeah. No, what was crazy for me was I had the same reaction because like I turned my TV up because depending on what app I'm using, my TV might be low or it might be at a high volume. I don't know. But I turned it up naturally. I was like, I'll decide how loud it needs to be based off of whatever dialogue comes up first and that was the first thing that came up and i was like okay turn it down what is happening what happened what uh deafening but oh man that song slaps absolutely hilarious i loved it so much what's your favorite aspect of this movie i think like i've been saying just how hard they went for this force material even though it would come off goofy they were like we're gonna do it down to like get over here the fire breath them shouting flawless victory and fatality in situations that don't even really call for it. And like even down to Johnny punching Goro in the nuts. Like that's his move in the game. He does the splits and punches you in the nuts because Johnny's that kind of character. I was wondering cuz I was like I yeah. feel like this scene is really undercutting the fact that this dude lost a friend like to this dude a few minutes ago. Yeah. I think most things that you look at and you're like, "Well, oh, that's kind of weird. It's from the game." <laughs> also that scene that bothered me because the scene before where he's talking to Sonya and He's like, I can't let what happened to Art happen to you, not to you. It's like, bro, you've known this woman for like 48 hours. If you don't relax. <laughs> also, like, no. do you guys even like each other? Right. Like, y'all didn't even like each other. Y'all just, y'all have been yeah, hanging right? out. He likes her. Sonya was not feeling him. Sonya was like, I yeah. get out of my face. <laughs> but yes, for the shippers out there, they do end up together and they have a kid. So that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Aww. They had a little, had a little meet cute. Is this all in the video game? Yes. Yo, we oh said God. the video games have a very deep mythos. They really do. Their kid's name is uh, Cassie Cage. Oh. Yeah. And she's very dope. I realized that this, these games have like hardcore mythos when I started watching like reaction videos to the trailer for the 2021 one. And people are just mm-hmm. like, oh, but is it this character or is it that character? Like, is it that version of Sub-Zero or is it that version of Sub-Zero? Oh, man. What if it's this one? I was just like, yo, I didn't even know that this was a Thing. I need to do research. Like what? Yeah. Just thought it was a fighting game. No, uh, I like. I want to take you guys on a journey too. through because it's so much fun. And Gabby, Johnny's, what's your Johnny's great? What's your favorite aspect of this movie? Dallas kind of took it. 
<laughs> well, one, I really like the set design because I was like, wow, they went hard on this. They did, yeah. It was like amazing. And then also just like how campy it is. I feel like this is the kind this is a great movie for like a midnight movie watch somewhere with like a big crowd and everyone's like drunk or like a drinking game or just like hanging out with friends, eating pizza and just like joking around. This is like the perfect movie for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I agree with you guys. I think like if you're going to do something like this, yeah, you got to go all into it, especially if you don't have the technology to quite do everything the way you want it to. But you just got to go for it. And this movie definitely goes for it. I do appreciate the fact that like even the things that we think are bad, like we we kind of talked smack about the way that they like interpreted some of these characters. But like even the things that we think are bad, they are kind, they are amusing enough that it's still enjoyable. Yeah. It's still something that I can enjoy. Also, this movie gets bonus points because they gave Kano my favorite knife in the world. It's called a jackal knife. I've never Mm. seen it in any piece of media outside of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know it shows up in Star Trek, but I've wanted to buy that knife since I was in high school because it's Faithful Haynes' signature knife in Buffy. So seeing Kano nice. with it, it was so funny because at first I was like, that looks like a jackal knife. And then I saw the bottom of the hilt and the way that it was coming out from like under his pinky. And I was like, that is a jackal knife. <laughs> so, yes, I know that knife very well and I love it. So bonus points for using it. Nice. Yeah, that's my favorite aspect. And, and the visuals, like on the cinematography level, I think I really liked those. I liked the that they weren't afraid to go for the colorful look. You know, if something is bathed in red, it is bathed in red. If it's bathed in blue, it's bathed in blue. Like, it is, they're not trying to hold back. They're like, nah, we're just going to go for it. And uh, they went for it. <laughs> yeah. That first scene when Lucan wakes up from the nightmare and oh, he's in green, covered in green. I was like, why is everything so green? And I was waiting for an explanation, but they didn't give. I was like, is he going to look outside? And it's like, I didn't know, but I loved it. I don't know what would explain that much green in real just life. A really bright tree. I'm but sure. I was like, what's happening? A neon right, light outside like the a window. Huge neon light, or like he's in the Matrix or something. I don't know, but it was, it looked it looked fun. Also, his hair was always perfectly coiffed oh. and amazing. <laughs> Loved his hair. It was like bouncy was and beautiful, and I was like, wow. You know, we didn't talk about the actual oh. action sequences, which what you're here <laughs> oh to see for God. a Mortal Kombat movie, which I thought were pretty good. Like I said, it's like it's, it's a '90s movie. Like even the action sequences are pretty campy in the same way that like the Power Rangers ones were. Not quite as campy as that, but <laughs> pretty close. I thought that they were pretty well choreographed. Yeah. They looked pretty cool at times. They did the things from the game. The bicycle kick that Liu Kang does is in the game. I thought that was really dope. Like we talked about the nut punch, Goro's move that he does on like discount Makai Pfeiffer guy. When he picks him up with the lower two arms and then hits him with the top two arms, that's from the game too. So it was like, they really did it. Scorpion's whole bag. I was kind of disappointed in their usage of Jax in Me too. Movie. He does nothing. Like he's there and then he's gone. He does nothing. He's Sonya's partner and yeah. then that's it. But, Got it. Um, but he had regular arms in this movie, which means he hasn't lost them yet. Yeah. So If I'm not mistaken, I want to say he starts in the games with regular arms and then gets the metal ones. So And you know, there's a sequel to this movie called Annihilation. So maybe yeah, he there more is. on that one. I was going to say that Eric put it on. Maybe that happens. (laughs) We were like five minutes in and it's like, oh, (laughs) all right. Five minutes in and half the cast is different, but all right. Yeah. All right. So final question then. Final question for this podcast. What are you expecting out of the new Mortal Kombat movie that is coming out tomorrow? I expect pretty much just everything to be better. (laughs) But I also think we're going to lose some of the fun goofiness because it looks real serious. Mortal Kombat has always had the characters like Scorpion and Sub-Zero, who are super serious. And then you have characters like Johnny, who are super goofy. And you have characters like Kano. I feel like they're going to have a good balance. But I feel like the movie is just going to be better overall, because there's stuff in that trailer that got me so hyped. Everything Sub-Zero does in that trailer, I'm like, yo, this is worth the price of admission. I'd buy a movie ticket just to watch a compilation of Sub-Zero scenes from this movie. Yeah, the scene at the end where he takes yeah. the blood and ices it and stabs the amazing. dude with it. I was like, that dang, was, bro. I was like, yo, you froze it and used it as, uh, so dope. It looks so dope. I can't wait. I was like, that's clever mm-hmm. right there. That's some clever stuff. Gabby looks very concerned. Gabby looks so <laughs> caught off guard. <laughs> I haven't seen the trailer. Oh, my God. I haven't. So I have no idea what the tone of this other movie is. I, I've, oh, I, it man. seems like it might. I've seen stills, so it seems like it's going to be very serious, like more s- serious action movie. It's rated R. Oh, yeah. This one's going to probably gonna be real bloody. That's another thing I was going to bring up is that like 
usually I'm not the type of person who's like, everything it should be rated R. You got to make it better, blah, blah, blah. But like, if there's something that should be rated R, it's definitely Mortal Kombat. Because even when the game was like, you know, just pixels in the 90s, there was blood everywhere. This isn't really something that should be PG-13. So... I mean, they're talking about fatalities all the time. Right. Like, yeah. like they're doing things that you shouldn't even do in a PG-13 movie. But since they would cut a certain way or not show the blood, then it's like, oh, we can get away with that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're going to go hard with this one. Are you avoiding the trailer? Yeah, the Gavin? trailer. Or are you just like haven't seen it? No, yeah. I just haven't seen it. Oh, you got to you gotta peep that. Oh, yeah, no, the trailer goes hard within the first minute of the starting. The first thing we see Sub-Zero do was wild. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's where we're going. Oh, yeah. They were not playing no games. They were like, this is what we're doing out it. here. Um, I'm super excited. This is Louis Tan's first leading role in an action movie. Oh, see so Luke Kang? Super hyped. No, he's not Luke Kang. Ludi Lin is Luke Kang. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right, right. Yes, that's dope. Louis Tan is playing a new character named oh, right. Cole Young, I believe. Yeah. But I love Louis Tan. I've been a fan of his since he stole the show in Iron Fist because he's he should have played Iron Fist. <laughs> um, he's a he's dope martial artist. And he's a really good actor, so I'm super excited to watch him in this movie. Um, I also love Ludi Lin because of Power Rangers. I'm a fan of of uh, Makad Brooks, mm-hmm. who is playing Jax. He's really great. He was on Supergirl for a while. And he was on True Blood back when I used to watch it. No, nah, I mean, I finished the show, but uh, <laughs> I finished it. I finished it years later. But yeah, I'm just super stoked. The cinematography on it looks super dope yes oh my gosh it looks beautiful yeah i'm excited to see to see how it goes it looks like it's super inclusive as a cast as well the cast is like super diverse mm-hmm. but yeah it just looks like it's going to be fun it also looks like it is going to be a a rough bloody time at the cinema lewis tan said that even he got a bit sick on sets on some days because of how bloody things were getting everybody looks super dope in this movie too and so do the effects man yeah especially the ice everything with the ice is amazing the fire stuff looks cool too. Raiden looks cool. It's like true. it all looks cool. Not white. And then the fight scenes, like not going to be campy at all. They got like actual martial artists in this movie to actually do martial arts. And it looks incredible in that trailer. I wish I could watch the trailer with Gabby because I want to see her reaction to the. We can. We can totally do that. We can do that. That's the thing we can Also, do. I feel like, or what I'm hoping for is they do what they did in john wick where because you've got real martial artists you can just do really long takes mm. of people just fighting i hope they do oh they that. probably will yeah because that be dope. was like right. the greatest part about john wick is like the long takes on just some brutal fighting that was amazing it was amazing i'm super excited about this movie and i'm super glad that we're going to be able to see it well me and dallas are going to be able to see it in a theater because we rented out a theater i have that to work did. gabby has yes. to miss out <laughs> unfortunate any any last thoughts on the 95 version it was campy and uh a little corny but i enjoyed myself i had a nice time yeah even the bad things it was like so bad it's good type of thing fair yeah a little bit it was a fun time i don't know if i'm ever gonna watch it again but... yeah i'm probably with you <laughs> unless like if it's I do... with the group right as i was gonna say like if there's like a we're hanging out as a group and it's like let's throw that motor combat on just to laugh definitely good for that yeah but yeah thank you audience as always for listening to all of our i wouldn't call it nostalgia because we all watched the movie for the first time today but you know our 90s appreciation thank you crown digital brandon and i for putting us on spotify and apple Podcasts. to me thanks for editing putting us on youtube repping for the knife enthusiasts in the in the audience and coming up with the idea for us to do this throwback because after i showed, saw that video and sent it to you i was like we have to do this we have we <laughs> have to do a compare and contrast <laughs> yeah i'm glad i don't know if anybody out there has seen the video of the trailers like side by side um of like footage of the 95 version next to the trailer footage from the new mortal Kombat. but i sent a part of that video to dallas and that's how we knew we had to do this <laughs> episode yeah. when i saw the thing sub-zero did with the gun I was like, ah, I did the thing, which uh, I don't want to keep talking about the new one, but it looks so much better. Anyway, Gabby, thank you for just appreciating how ridiculous this movie is, because that's what we're all here for. Normally, when Colin chooses not to be here, I say, Colin, thanks for nothing. But he had a scheduling conflict, so I'm not going to say that. Colin, we love you. Audience, tell us what you think about the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. Are you a fan of the games? Can you explain the rules of this tournament to us? Because they make no sense. And maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it's a game thing. 
I don't know. Let us know on the medias, Twitter, y'all underscore different, Instagram and Tumblr, Creative Differences Podcast, and Facebook.com slash Creative Differences PC. If you want to talk to me about how dope Sub Zero is, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the King Name Symbol. You can find me, Gabby, on the Instagrams at Stegosoria. And if you guys can tell me more about the mythology of Mortal Kombat, you guys can hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Dreamy Films. Dreamy is spelled D R E E M I. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Also, I could tell you that, so I feel a little bit disrespected that you're outsourcing that, but you know, it's fine. Fan engagement. I'm sorry, I my bad. It. My bad. <laughs> you know, engagement. I, yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah. my best, you know. Yeah, fans, reach out to Demi because we need more fan engagement. Or just tell us in the comments below. Yes, YouTube comments. We like yeah. those. They're, they're a fun little time. Except for the spam bots. All you weird little bots. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Oh, and also you can find Colin on Twitter at Goro's Groupie. It's all ah, one word. It's a good one. Thank you. It's been different. Bye. Bye.